Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a rhino plush out of a fuzzy sock. This is pretty similar to my pig plush, so like that one, it's one of the more time consuming plushies to make. However, I think it's super cute and totally worth it. So let's get started. To start, you're going to need one fuzzy sock in the color of your choice, I'm using blue, and a scrap of white sock for the horn. The first thing you're going to want to do is turn the sock so that the heel is facing upwards. Using a marker, I'm using this sharpie, draw two legs on either side of the heel with the front one slightly longer than the back ones. Now we're going to thread the needle. If this is your first fuzzy sock plushie, I highly recommend checking out my beginner's guide to making fuzzy sock plushies. If you have time practicing a couple easier ones, then coming back to this video. Backstitch along the line you drew on both sides. Next, cut out your piece, making sure to save the scraps because we'll be using them later. Cut a slit in the heel for turning. Next, turn it inside out, being careful not to put too much stress on the opening to prevent fraying as much as possible. Poke out each of the legs with your fingers. Fill each leg with a small wisp of toy stuffing. It's very important not to overstuff this plush because it has to be able to fold into a sitting position. With that in mind, stuff a larger ball into the body. This was actually too much, so I removed some of it off camera. This next step is completely optional, but I'm going to add a yarn tail. Here I have some DK or light worsted weight yarn in a color that matches my sock. Preferably, it should be a bit thicker than this, but it's more important that it matches the sock. Thread one end of your yarn through a yarn needle and tie several knots in the other. Bend your plush into a sitting position, with the back legs being shorter than the front. Mark a nice spot for the tail with a pin, then pull the needle through from the inside out. It took me several attempts to get this right because the knot kept popping through the fabric. Eventually, with enough knots, I got it, and proceeded to tie several knots on the other side of the fabric to hold it in place. Then cut off the excess yarn. Now we can close up the hole in the body with a running stitch. Pull it closed like a drawstring bag, then secure it with a couple of stitches. Here's what your plush should look like so far. The next step is going to be to sew it into a sitting position. To do this, attach the thread to a random spot on the belly, then alternate stitches between the bottom of the leg and the belly. Be sure to pull the leg far enough down so that the front legs sit evenly with the back legs so that it doesn't have any standing problems. Then, I did the exact same thing with the other leg, as well as lather stitching the legs together to give it an overall cleaner look. Next, we're going to work on the head. For this, you could use the toe of the sock that we cut off. 
Flip it inside out, then draw the front of the face using the curve of the toe as the back of the head. Backstitch on the outline you drew, just like with the body. Cut it out and make a slit on the back of the head for turning. Then you can turn it and stuff. Close the gap with a running stitch, making sure to tuck in all the raw edges. Just like with the body, secure it with a couple stitches over top. Next, we're going to work on the horn. Using the scrap of white sock, draw a horn shape, then backstitch everything but the bottom edge. After cutting it out, turning, and stuffing, close the gap with a running stitch, again making sure to tuck in all the loose ends. This step can be a bit challenging, so if it's not working for you, you could also make the horn out of polymer or air dry clay, leaving holes in the bottom to attach it, kind of like a homemade bead. If you use polymer clay, it may be a bit too heavy, and you'll have to add a counterweight to the body. You could also sew it out of felt, or needle felt it, or even write your own pattern to crochet it. Either way, you're going to want to whip stitch it onto the body. Finally, we're going to make the ears with another scrap of sock. It doesn't really matter what shape you make them because nearly all the definition will be lost when you turn it, but just for fun I drew these. Again, backstitch, cut them out, and turn them. You won't have to add stuffing as all the raw edges inside will be plenty. The same thread you use to sew it closed can also be used to attach it to the head. This step is also optional, but after I attached the second ear, I added two dimples where I wanted the eyes. Now we can finally attach the head to the body. And after that, all that's left to do is attach the eyes. I'm super gluing on these flat backed eyes, however, if you don't have these, you can also sew on regular beads or tie knots with black embroidery thread. And with that, the rhino is finished. I think it came out really cute. Also, on a side note, we are so close to 100 subscribers, and I have something really epic planned. It's probably going to take a while to get it done, so it may be a bit before it comes out, so feel free to subscribe if you don't want to miss that. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!